Hey everyone, this video we're talking about files. Example one says to open fightsong.txt and print out all lines. So just to show you, I have a separate file in my same folder that I'm working in called fightsong.txt and it's the mines fight song. Uh, nothing too special in terms of the data here. It's just, as you can see, 13 lines of strings. So if we go back into the code, we'll use our normal file syntax to open this. So this entails the with keyword, so with, and then we'll call the open function, and then our file to open, with open fightsong.txt as file. So now we're assigning this opened file to a variable called file, and then we can do things with the file. So one useful thing is a for in loop over a file, which returns us all lines in the file. So we can say for line in file, and my indentation was off there. And then we can say print line, and that will work. That'll print out everything just fine. Now there is one step that I missed, and that's closing the file. So when we're done doing our operations on the file, whether that's reading or writing or appending, we want to always just say file.close. And this is because one, other applications may want to use the file and sometimes our program doing things to a file may prevent the operating system or other programs from doing something to the file. And it's also just good practice. We want to signify that we're done with the file. I also should mention that by default with the open function, the default mode for the file when we call open is reading. So I could have also said comma r for read mode, but that is the default. If we wanted to write, we could have done w, and then if we wanted to append, we could have done a. As you can see, even with the file.close, this will be the same thing, but now we more cleanly just executed that file and signified that we're done with it now. All right, so example two, we're going to write a program that collects data on studying habits and writes a file called students.csv with the results. Now, some quick background on what a CSV file is. It's a comma separated value file, and it's one of the most common file formats for data. Um, as the name implies, the values are comma separated. So in this example, we have stock market data, which we have the company's ID, um, the share price, and then the date. And that's just for this example, we'll do a different one. But we know when dealing with CSV data, we know how our data is formatted. And spreadsheets are essentially CSV data, right? Because we have data in each cell and that is separated by a comma. Um, you may have also seen an XSLX file, which is a spreadsheet file, um, but that's not the same. That contains more data related to the workspace and your user settings. For this example, we're writing a program that collects data on student studying habits and writes a file called students.csv with the results. And results should be in that format. So let's first just get a lot of user input here. So we need name. Um, what is your name? We'll ask the user for that. And that's a string credits. We'll have as an integer. We can say, how many credit hours are you taking? And I guess that could be a float as well because we could have half a credit. And then we'll say hours. Actually, we'll make that a float as well. And we'll just keep on getting user input. So how many hours do you study each day? And then location is just a string input. What is your favorite study spot? Nice. And then now we actually want to open our out file. So this is a little weird at first because we're writing to a file, but we need to open it even if it doesn't exist. And that's handled within Python. So we can say something like out file equals open students.csv, will, which will be created if it doesn't exist already. And then we can open that in write mode. And then we'll say out file .write, and then we can really just plug everything in. So F strings may also be a good thing to use here. We can say name, comma, credits, comma, hours, 
comma location. And then we'll end that with backslash n, which signifies a new line. And we'll ensure that each line is put on the next line. And then we'll also close this file when we're done as well. So I'll run that. I'll enter some of my info. Oh, typo there, but that's okay. And then I'll go and check my students.csv in another tab, and we can see that here. So one thing to note is if we had had this in append mode instead of write, that would add to the end of the file. With write mode, even if there is anything in the file, it directly overrides it and just deletes it. As an example of appending, we can say another person, and then we'll enter some other data. And then if we go back into the file and we'll have to refresh, it has appended that other line instead of replacing all of them. And there are use cases for both append and write modes. Also, one thing to note is that there is an entire dedicated CSV module for Python built in. So it actually makes it even easier than this to read and write CSV files, which I would recommend doing instead of hard coding it like this. Our final example says that in programming competitions, input is often given in this file format, which tells you the number of test cases, which is denoted n, to follow and each test case. So in this sample.in file, which .in is a bit of a weird ex file extension, but it's just a text file, same with .out, we have three, which signifies that there are three lines to follow, one, two, three, and then output signifies what the output is. When your program is ran against the solution, it will actually pipe your in file through to your program and it will compare your output with the sample output file. So it does that automatically as well. You may have also seen this in our studio problems. We sometimes do the same with this. So given the test case in sample.in, write a program that reads in that file and adds all n numbers and prints them out. So first we'll just open up this file. We'll name it file is open sample.in. As I mentioned, this is just a text file, so we can open it up and then maybe we'll make a variable for the number of test cases and we'll say int and then we'll want to use file dot read line. So this reads in the first line of the file and then discards it. So if we were to call file dot read line again, it would be the line after the line we just read. And we'll actually do this again in a moment. But first we need to make our sum or our total. So we'll make that equal to zero. And then maybe an incremental for loop would be useful here for I in range zero to the number of test cases, which is three. We'll add total is int and then the next line. So for each line after three, the for loop is gonna run. So on the first iteration, we add one. On the second iteration, we add two. And on the third iteration, we add zero. And of course, that corresponds to i equals zero, one, and two. And again, each line is sort of discarded once we're done with it, and then it will move on to the next. And we'll print out this total, and also remember to file.close. And that gives us six which matches the sample output. And just to touch on the usefulness of why we do this, it's useful because sometimes if we don't know the bounds of our data or the bounds of our file, then that can be really hard to iterate over. So we might have to read the file until we reach the end of the file or until we have some amount of data we want. But for a more controlled environment like a programming competition, or the studios you do, we want to be able to exactly match inputs to outputs. And that makes it easier for you as a student writing a program and for us also auto grading your programs to just have this input output format. That's it for files. Hopefully you now have a better idea of the file modes and how to read and write to files.